To think about how we want to complement ourselves using computers, it's helpful to think a little bit about what computers are good at that we're not good at and the things that we're good at that computers aren't good at. So we can think a little bit about how to fit computers into our lives and how to make sure that they're complementing us and not you know, uh, doing things to us that we wouldn't necessarily like. So what are computers good at that people are not? Well, computers are good, um, as the name might suggest, at computing things. So computers can rapidly and accurately perform billions of simple mathematical operations. Um, and those operations actually sort of can, can result in this sort of emergent behavior where they have displays and they can you know, uh, understand quote unquote human speech and things like this. So as computers have gotten faster and faster and faster and they've gotten faster at just a, an incredible rate, um, all of those computations and clever algorithms and new ideas for ways to process data have sort of led computers to have all these human-like characteristics. But at their fundamental, you know, at the fundamental base, all they're doing is simple mathematical operations over and over and over again, but just so fast that those operations can start to sort of result in things that seem much more human and much more complicated. Uh, but fundamentally, they're very, very good at computing. They can do lots and lots of operations, so they can certainly do math way better than we can. Um, storage. Storing data, remembering data, recalling data. This is something that computers are extremely good at, um, obviously. And this is something that we're using computers for and we're using the internet for as ways of documenting our lives, making sure that you know, uh, by posting things to Facebook, by taking pictures and putting them on our computers, we're saving those in a way that's easy to find. So computers can present nice interfaces for looking through things, um, but also in ways that are, are somewhat permanent, right? Maybe, you know, maybe it's permanent, depending on how you do backups, as printing them and putting them in a drawer, but certainly in, in some ways much more useful. They're easier to find and more compact. They don't take up all the sorts of space in our house. But computers are very, very good at storing things. They have perfect memory which is way, way, way better than mine. Um, another thing computers are really good at, and this is particularly useful to, for humans, is reaction times. Why are we going to start letting computers drive our cars? It's because computers have way, way better reflexes than we do. To some degree, our human brains, while they have really, really beautiful capabilities, are really slow when it comes to responding to information. So when I'm driving on the highway, that's why I have to leave a really long space in front of me because by the time I notice that the driver in front of me has started to break because their lights came on and that sort of flows up through my cortex and some part of me starts to make a decision about what should I do and there's some reasoning involved and then I have to send a signal down to my foot to push the brake pedal so I slow down a little bit. I have to leave space in front of me in order for that to happen. A computer does not. So you know, one of the things that's exciting about self-driving cars is not only that they could potentially be safer than humans but they can also make much, much better use of road capacity because they can drive right behind the car in front of them. And the reason for that is they can react much, much, much faster as soon as they sense a difference in what that car is doing, um, even without communicating. Even if they can just see, oh, the distance between me and that car has started to decrease, they can respond so quickly by adjusting their own speed that we can bin pack cars onto the freeway much more effectively. So that's something else that the computers are very, very good at is this idea of reaction. Um, and these are, I think, kind of some of the fundamental uh, differences between us and computers. Uh, computers can, can compute, they can do simple operations way faster, they can store data and recall it much, much more quickly than we can, and they can react much faster than we can to changing circumstances. So, you know, if you can, um, and I guess, you know, the other thing I would put in here is, is communication. Um, so computers can communicate with each other and can communicate in ways that are beyond our human capabilities. So, you know, the idea that I can be on my mobile device and that device can send a signal to a cell tower that's a kilometer away and that signal can be transmitted across a global computer network to a friend who's chatting with me on some sort of chatting application, that's a mode of communication that humans are not capable of. Our voices aren't loud enough. There's, we don't have any ways to sort of create that sort of uh, disturbance in the environment that would allow us to communicate at such a distance at, at such a speed. Um, so, so these are ways in which computer capabilities we can really think of as augmenting or exceeding, far exceeding, our own human abilities.